I recommend starting with downloading the new CPDP manual. This is different from last year's because it contains the new activity codes for category C and D. You can click the link in the infographic to take you directly to the PDF on the RCPA website. Download it and store it in your computer in your CPDP folder. Open it up. You'll see that this is the 2020 version, which is what you want, and scroll down to page 8. I found it useful to reduce the complexity by marking up the codes that are applicable to me by using the highlighting tool here and the text tool. So I understand how the activity applies to my workflow. Then when I refer back to this PDF, I immediately know how to code an activity and what the restrictions are. Such as two hours are allowed for preparation of a lecture or tutorial and three hours for the preparation of a poster or oral presentation. What I picked out of category C is if I am the presenter at an MDT then I can code this as 51 in category C rather than in category A. Similarly, when I show my reports to others to review, that's a code 54, and showing my slides to others is a code 57. These are all valuable category C activities. Category D, although there are a lot of activities listed, not so many are applicable to my workflow. I did highlight a few. Here's an applicable one, working up a new method such as a new immunohistochemistry, and I'm working on one with ROS for heat shock protein 70, and the usual one here of code 84 for participating in the external QAP program. Another Category D code is if you send away your case for an outside external opinion. So now I have a personalized CPDP manual specific to my workflow.